We're back with more on the WHHI News, and joining me now is State Senator Tom Davis via Zoom. Now, the governor the other day vetoed three bills that would have erased the records of certain people who had gun charges or convictions, drinking underage, bad checks. He vetoed that. Senator Davis, is the legislature going to take any action on that now? We will. We're going to go back uh, three times in June. Uh, June 5th, we're going back to elect a new Supreme Court justice, and then we'll go back on two other occasions in June. What I suspect we'll do is there'll be several uh, bills that Governor McMaster has vetoed that we'll take up at one time. We probably won't do it on June 5th. My guess would be probably sometime the second meeting in June. Um, we'll take up all those bills. And, uh, of course, as you know, it, it takes a two-thirds vote in the House and the Senate to override the gubernatorial veto. So I'm interested to see, you know, what reasons he articulated for the vetoes. Uh, he always gives very thoughtful reasons um, and looking forward to, to finding out what they are and then debating the issue. You have been a champion for getting a medical marijuana bill passed in the state. Just briefly, I know it did not happen this go round. Is it dead in the water? Can we see that coming back again at some point? Well, I think we have, you know, 39 states now that have legalized cannabis for medical purposes. And so we have, uh, I have proposed a very conservative law here in South Carolina where doctors could authorize uh, cannabis use by patients for certain conditions. The doctor would have to monitor that use. Pharmacists would have to dispense it. It's a very conservative bill. Um, you know, it passed the Senate twice and it's died in the House twice. Uh, I think the landscape has changed now that the federal government is thinking about rescheduling uh, marijuana from a Schedule One drug to a Schedule Three drug. So, you know, look, it's, it's just been um, a, a long battle and that's the way it ought to be. Things ought not to be easy. And the opposition I've received has made the bill better. So I look forward to getting it across the finish line sometime next year. Let's talk about the bridge to Hilton Head Island, construction of the bridge. Uh, the town went out and asked a consultant to come forward with some ideas. They have gotten four different proposals. I know you're involved in this whole uh, situation. Tell us about your involvement and where we're at right now. Right. I mean, my involvement in this has been twofold. One is to make sure the funding stays in place. I mean, as you know, we got a $120 million grant from the State Infrastructure Bank. We also got an allocation of funds from the Department of Transportation. And so I've been working over the last few years to make sure that funding is in place, and it is still in place. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing I wanted to make sure of is, is that the process uh, here, the design process, is sufficient to allow every member of the Hilton Head Island and Greater Island community to be heard and to have their concerns addressed. I want this to be work product that the people of Hilton Head feel is theirs and not something given to them by somebody in Columbia. So my understanding is... Uh, that the town of Hilton Head will probably in their second meeting in June next month, in just a few weeks, will vote on whether to give uh, municipal consent and final approval to those DOT plans. Um, I do I know that the consultant has some recommendations on how to you know, modify those plans or tweak them to make them better. Um, and I think those are well received by the DOT. But I think this is coming in for a landing. Wow. It sounds like it will be. And we'll keep our eyes out for that. I uh, want to ask you, you were a supporter of Governor, former Governor Nikki Haley uh, in her run for the Republican nomination for president. This week, she came out and gave her endorsement to Donald Trump, said she would vote for him. You know, I happened to be at a, a rally she attended at Caligny, and I had a friend walk by and he said, well, what difference will it make? She's going to end up endorsing Trump anyway. Do you think some people that that you know, look at the landscape of politics of what ends up happening are a little frustrated by that? Or what are your feelings about it? Well, there may be some frustration. I mean, look, there is an honest debate going on in the Republican Party right now about what kind of a party does it want to be? Does it want to be as it has been classically for the last 30, 40 years, which is a party of limited government, you know, uh, rule of law, strong national defense, you know, sort of a Reagan Republican or do we want to be a more populist party? Do we want to be a, a, a party that um, that isn't tied to some of those traditional things that you think about the Republican Party? And there's an honest debate going about, on about that right now. And Nikki Haley represents, you know, sort of the Ronald Reagan limited government, uh, traditional conservative Republican. And uh, former President Donald Trump represents a more populist uh, view. And so, um, look, we're having an honest debate in the Republican Party about what that party is going to be. Um, that debate's ongoing. Uh, it'll continue on into the convention this summer. And I think Nikki Haley, I'm very proud of her for articulating um, her vision of what the party should be and her view of how the Republican Party can best serve the American people. State Senator Tom Davis, great to have you on via Zoom today. We appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me. Take care. And we will be back in just a moment.